Dodge critics, as I mentioned, atop of the hour of this domestic terror bill, are pointing to this recent comment from former CIA director John Brennan and the way he grouped libertarians in with extremists. Watch this. No, looking forward that the members of the, the Biden team who have been nominated or have been appointed are now moving in laser-like fashion to try to uncover as much as they can about what looks very similar to insurgency movements that we've seen overseas, mm -hmm. where they germinate in different parts of a country and they gain strength and it brings together an unholy alliance frequently of religious, ex religious extremists, authoritarians, fascists, bigots, uh, racists, nativists, uh, even libertarians. Republican Senator Ron Johnson blocked the domestic terrorism bill from going to the Senate after the House passed it last fall. So we've seen this before. He also wrote letters to the House and the Senate sergeants at arms this morning, seeking information about the security planning prior to what happened on January 6th. As you can see, Senator Ron Johnson of the great state of Wisconsin joins me now. I want to give you the complete floor on this and tell me, first of all, what this is exactly, why you blocked it the, second, uh, the first time and why you're blocking it now. Well, good morning, Harris. I think what we're witnessing is what we're witnessing the cancer culture purge being kicked into overdrive here. When, when you have former CIA director uh, starting to target laser-like uh, libertarians. I mean, that's a pretty wide net that they're casting. Listen, I condemn violence in all its form. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care what the ideology. I don't care what side of the aisle. Violence is wrong. I condemn white supremacists as I condemn Antifa and, and other people that turn a peaceful protest into riots where people are killed and property is destroyed. I condemn it all. Uh, and the fact of the matter is we have laws on the books to deal with people that commit those kind of illegal and heinous acts. We don't need new laws. We need to enforce the ones we have, but we need to enforce them equally. So I am concerned at a movement right now to, to basically paint a broad brush and accuse 74 million Americans, basically, that voted for President Trump and label them as insurgents. No, th these, are peop these are citizens that love this nation. I don't know anybody that voted for President Trump, personally, that would Con, con, that would condone any of this type of activity. We condemn it. I mean, my, my problem, Harris, is I don't know how many times somebody like myself has to condemn white supremacists, but what we don't hear is equal con condemnation coming out of Democrats against Antifa and those peaceful protesters that end up rioting and, and taking other, other people's lives and destroying property. Where, where's the equal treatment under the law? That's one of the things that upsets conservatives. Senator Johnson, it's easy for Americans to agree on what really terrorism is because we've experienced it. It's easy for us to agree on what hate looks like because we know it. We've experienced it. Unfortunately, the whole world does. Um, but the unintended circumstances of legislation like this also has the ire up of civil rights groups. How is it that you are on both sides of this issue. What is broken about this bill? What is dangerous about this bill? Well, again, it would, ex it would expand governmental authority, and we've seen the abuse of prosecut prosecutorial authority. Uh, the, the, let's face it, the corrupt investigation by the FBI against the Trump administration. We've seen prosecutorial abuse. And p part of the reasons we have a Bill of Rights, you know, the, 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 the Fourth and Fifth Amendment, uh, the reason we have these protections is to guard against government overreach, about government taking away our personal liberties and our freedoms. And when you start having government uh, enact more laws that infringe upon our rights, that's dangerous no matter who you are. You know, it may, it may feel good if you're on one side of the political spectrum that uh, uh, won an election and use those governmental weapons against your opposition. It's going to feel not so good when the other side uh, wins elections and that same power could be used against you. So we need to tread very carefully. And again, we have laws on the books. The vast majority of Americans do not support these groups, no matter what side of the political spectrum they're on. We need to, we need to investigate them. We need to bring them to justice. We need to prosecute them. 
You know, what happened in the Capitol is completely unacceptable. I'm glad the FBI is aggressively trying to find those people and prosecute them to the full extent of the law. I wish they were as, as aggressive against Antifa and, and the other people that uh, did, you know, for example, in, in Kenosha, the, the dozens of businesses that were burned. You know, people died in those riots as well. Where's the aggressive approach to enforcing the law when it comes to the, the summer riots? Well, we just saw a couple of nights ago, I mean, that the violence uh, among anarchists in this country, Seattle, Denver, uh, Portland, Oregon again. Uh, just real quickly, because I want to put a fine point on this. I want to focus in on this. Civil rights groups were fighting against something like this back in the day when they were looking for equality, because I don't know what offends people about libertarianism or anything else like that, but if you start to target people on what they say and what they think, that's not America anymore. No, and again, I think it's, it says an awful lot when you have uh, civil libertarian groups from across the political spectrum opposed to this bill. I mean, let's just, you talked about Seattle and Portland. You, I know you're reporting that on Fox. Where is the outrage in the rest of the mainstream media about that? And I've been arguing for quite some time that the bias in the media poses a far greater danger to our democracy. They had a greater effect and impact on our election. They interfered more than any, anything Russia or any other foreign entity could have ever hoped to achieve, and the mainstream media will never admit their role in widening this d divide and exacerbating the problem. That, that is an enormous problem we face in this nation, is an unequal and a biased uh, media and social media that has chosen sides. That represent, represents a real danger to our Democratic Republic as well. Yeah, and when you talk about it making its way to Capitol Hill through legislation, uh, we'll, we'll see what that fight is going to be like that you no doubt will be part of against this. I, I want to get this, because this just happened a few minutes ago. So Democrats are going to move ahead, we now know when, with their second impeachment of former President Trump. So this will be in the Senate. It already happened in the House. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer just said this a short time ago. Let's watch and I'll get your reaction. I have spoken to Speaker Pelosi, who informed me that the articles will be delivered to the Senate on Monday. That means the trial would begin on Monday. Senator Johnson, walk us through what's about to happen. Well, again, actions speak louder than words. I appreciated uh, President Biden's uh, unifying words, most of them, at the inaugural uh, address. But now you take a look at what's actually happening. If President Biden was actually serious about trying to unify and heal this nation, he would have told, he would still tell Nancy Pelosi, just, you know, sit on those articles of impeachment and never send them over. In terms of uh, what, you know, Majority Leader uh, Schumer is going to be talking about now, uh, holding a, a speedy trial and then trying to bifurcate Senate confirmation of national security posts versus a vindictive and what I would consider an unconstitutional impeachment trial, he can't have it both ways. He's got to choose between between vindictiveness or national security, I hope he makes the right choice. Wow. Uh, we say it's 2021. This part of it, though, these two things make it feel a little bit more like 2020. We'll see what happens. We're covering Very unfortunate. the present and the future. Uh, from Wisconsin and today from the Capitol, Senator Johnson, thank you for getting things started on the Faulkner Focus. Have a good day.